Hey everyone, thanks for checking out Everyday Short Stories Chapter 3, and this month's theme was family. Although this story has very little to do with family, it's called Escape from Alabama. And just a warning, there's a, a lot of adult language and subject matter that may not be appropriate for kids. I hope you enjoy. Thanks. Uh, how's everybody? Pretty good? Good. Get over it. Over it. <laughs> uh, this is not about family. Really at all. This is just a misadventure of uh, of my life, and one of them that might happen. Um, I was 21. I was in New York driving a cab, and I wanted to get out of New York, um, so I uh, decided to hitchhike to California. I got I hitchhiked around the country a little bit for about four or five months. I met I met another guy. We hitchhiked together, and we ended up in New Orleans, uh, overlooking wow. Bourbon Street, jacking up. With Four girls, yeah. which actually was very nice. Uh, I was a resident masseuse, and he was a drunk. Which, so he uh, went to the bar, and he uh, got carried away and hit a few people. And he went to jail. So I uh, went through his stuff, took everything that I could use, and left. I uh, I hit Mississippi, and I got into the middle of Alabama. Somebody dropped me off. They were going south. I was going north. I was going to go back home for a while. And I'm, I'm in I'm Alabama. It's 100 degrees and 126 degrees humidity. I mean, it is, it is seriously fucking lousy. And I'm walking, and my hair is down my shoulder, and this half-painted pickup truck just mm, pulls over. And the guy says, throw your stuff in the back. So I said, oh, I threw my stuff in the back. And in the back, there was like chainsaws and shovels and wood and shit. So the guy gets out, and I get in between these two guys. And there's a shotgun leaning on the thing next to my shoulder. And I, I, I'm looking at the guy that's driving. He's got a, he's got a gold tooth over here. <laughs> I'm looking at him. I'm looking at this guy. And he says, you know, he says, this, this, I think this is a hippy dippy. Don't you think so, Charlie? So he goes, yep. And then I, I, I you know, I, I look at him, and he's got this gray hat. First of all, he's wearing a fucking plaid t-shirt. Have you ever seen one of those? <laughs> Do they make such a fucking thing? A plaid t-shirt? That's impossible. So this guy, he's got this straw hat, and on the side, you know, the straw is, is, is missing and it's faded. I found the missing straw over here in Charlie's mouth, you know? He had a lot of straw. He was going for the real deep thinker look, you know? So... We're going along, and, and, and he says, you know, we don't get many hippies down here, do we, Charlie? Charlie says, nope. And I said, I want to, I, I think I should talk, you know, I shouldn't just sit there with this fucking shotgun. So I said, well, what do you, what do you all do down here? I'm trying to be a little southern, you know? And, then, and he says, well, we do, we do a little of this and a little of that. Isn't that right, Charlie? Charlie goes, yep. Yeah. So I turned to Charlie, who, by the way, has another one of these limited edition T-shirts on, and I say to him, I said, do you say anything besides nope or yep? He said, nope. So we're going a bit, and the, and the driver says, you know, you, your hair, you got such long hair, you look like a girl. You could pass for a girl. Couldn't he, Charlie? Yep. So I said, well, you know, I'm, I've been on the road a bit, and I'm going to get to the next town. I'm going to get a little haircut. He says, I think we can help you with that. Don't you, don't you think so, Charlie? Charlie goes, yep. He pulls over to the side of the road. He says, get him out. So Charlie says, right old Bobby Joe. I said, what the fuck? He's dragging me out of the truck, and I'm thinking, right old Bobby Joe? What? That can't be right. You know? And he straps me to the front of the hood, holds my hand behind me, and Bobby Joe is rummaging through his tools and his shovels and his fucking, you know, and he comes out with these big shears. And he comes over and he starts chopping my head, just cutting my hair completely off. And until he found a couple of bald spots, and then he threw me to the ground, threw my stuff out of the truck, and they and they pulled off. And I'm sitting there, dripping wet. And and they go about an eighth of a mile, and they turn around and come back, and the shotgun comes out the window. And I'm thinking, okay, all right, all right, this is it. I'm gonna fucking die in Alabama in 126 degrees humidity. This is going to be one sticky stairway to heaven. And this fucking guy is coming down with this. And I'm, I'm staring at him. I said, I'm not going to run. 
they want me to run. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to run. So I'm staring at him. He goes down the thing, turns around, another eight months comes back, the shotgun comes out the window again, and I'm thinking, all right, God, get me out of this, and I'll, I'll give you five bucks the next time I'm in church. Plus, uh, that, that might be a while, but uh, heaven knows, she uh, needs <laughs> money, you know? And so he, they left, and, I, and I'm sitting there, you know, and I'm saying, oh, this is, this is terrible. Finally, that 30 minutes, I got up, started hitchhiking again. I said, no, but who's going to, nobody's going to pick me up. I mean, my head looks like a half a head of lettuce, you know, strapped to an electrified fence for a couple of fucking semesters. And here comes this car, little little white car, and I hear this sweet voice saying, you know, I'm only going down the road a piece, but you're welcome to get a ride. Now, you know, in Alabama, down the road a piece is like 30, 40 miles. You know, I mean, God forbid they say way up the road. Where are you going to end up? No fucking Alaska somewhere? So I get in the car, I tell her my story. And she's really, really sweet. And she says, you know, you know, some people down here are just not that friendly. I said, really? <laughs> so she goes to the next town, and she pulls up in the driveway. And she said, why don't you come in? We can rustle you up something to eat. I said, oh, great, you know? So I go in there, and she's making hamburgers, and she made a salad, and we're eating. And, 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 I, and I finally, after I ate, I said to her, I said, you know, her name is Shelly. She was a school teacher on hiatus for the summer, 32. And I said, you know, you're being really generous to a complete stranger. I said, how do you know I'm not a maniac? She goes, I know. And I said, how? She says, well, the angels around your karma tell me so. I said to myself, whoa. You know? I said, Sherry, I don't think I understand that. She goes, I know. She says, well, why don't you come in the kitchen and I'll see if I can even out your head a little bit. I'm not a hairdresser, but I'll give it a try. So we did that. And uh, then she said, you know what? You can sleep on the sofa and get an early start in the morning, maybe take a shower and, and make you feel better. So I'm in the shower for about three minutes. And I hear a voice saying, Tim, would you like somebody to wash your back? <laughs> my, my jaw drops, you know, and I open up the curtain. And there she is, totally naked. I mean, she is absolutely stunning. She's like... She's Demi Moore, curly hair with hazel eyes. This woman was beautiful. So I, I you know, I, I just put my hand up and I said, well, absolutely, you know. And I brought her in the shower. And I was just marvelous, the warm one. I'm thinking, what is what are the angels giving me, like forgiving me or helping me because I got screwed by those two local yokels? And we so we made love that night and in the morning and then she she bought me coffee, and she said, you know what, you stay there, and I'm going to make some, whip us up some pancakes, some southern-style pancakes. So she did that, and uh, I ate the pancakes. And I was just sitting, laying in bed, and I'm thinking, why is this happening to me? What did I do? I don't understand this. Here's a warm, loving, beautiful woman who's sensitive, spiritual, philosophical. I said, what the fuck is this? I, I'm, I'm used to street girls, addicts, junkies. That's what I'm used to. And I said, I, I don't get this. So she gets me in the car. She goes, I'll take you to the state line. So she drives me about an hour away. I got to the state line. Uh, she says, here, take this. She gives me 20 bucks. She said, you're going to need a little money to get to New York. You've got a couple of states to go. I said, you're right. So I leaned over, and I gave her a soft kiss. And I looked in her eye, and I said, I said, Shelly, you're adorable. And she said, so are you, Tim. I got out of the car, I walked about 15 feet, I turned around and winked, and she smiled and made a U-turn and drove out of my life forever. I, I felt absolutely great. I mean, she was hard to leave, but, but my, my faith in humanity and, and karma just like was off the wall. I was dancing in the streets and I was walking and I was feeling so cool, man. I was feeling so good. I would have done handsprings if I knew how to do the fucking things. And I, so I, I was walking around, and I'm up as a pup. And then a cop car pulls up. The guy sticks one foot out and looks over the roof and says, get in the car. Now I'm, now I'm thinking, what am I going to do? I mean, I got a equivalent of like eight joints stashed under my balls. And I said, well, <laughs> they're not there now. And so I, I, get, in, I get in the car. And we go, and he says, so, so where are you from? I said, I'm from New York. 
He says, uh, what happened to your head? I said, nothing. I like it that way. <laughs> and, and he said, well, what would you do up in New York? I said, well, the last time I was there, I was, uh, I was driving a cab. He says, aha. So you never finished high school, huh? I said, well, I, says, I, I got up in the eighth grade and said, I'm finished. <laughs> and he said, but that's not funny. And I said, well, I, I know a lot of things that are funny. I thought that was one of them. And also my head. He didn't say nothing. He was zilch, buckus. It was like a dead, he was a dead catfish, this guy, this cop. So he drove me up to another cop who was leaning against his car, a big guy, eating a donut. And he said, he gets out and, and this guy says, what do we got here? Another one of these hippie junkie jerks? And the cop says, yeah. So he says, get in the car. So I'm in the car waiting for him to finish his donut. He comes in. He starts driving. This guy says nothing. Nothing at all. So I'm thinking, junkie jerks? I said, maybe, I said, sounds like a fucking snack. You know what I do? I'll go home, manufacture these, distribute them, and I can see it now, the snack craze sweeping the country. Step right up, get your new and improved junkie jerks. Lots of pies last, only two to a time. So I get home, finally, he, he pulls over and says, get going, get out. So I walk in and he says, you're going to keep going the way you're going, aren't you? I said, yep. He says, you're not going to come back this way now, are you? I said, no. So I, I got out of Alabama. I got home. And my mother was thrilled to see me alive. And on a personal note, I just want to say that I personally experienced a, a friend's close overdose death. A murder, prison, rape, everything before I was 20 years old. I'd been entrenched and addicted and struggling with opiate addiction for 50, over 50 years. So if anybody has any questions or uh, needs a shoulder or, or an ear or knows somebody who's in the throes of addiction and is sick and tired of being sick and tired, I'm on Facebook, you know, please shoot me a message and perhaps I can help. Thank you. Hey everyone, thanks for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe to this fantastic YouTube channel. Thanks. By like and subscribe, I mean, you know, validate me, make me feel loved. So if you don't subscribe and like, then I'll know you don't love me.